dollars sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the Ola 7 podcast show. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, 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 guys. Magadi, Magadi, how are you doing? My name is DJ Ola7 Owen. We're Kwame Adodo here on the Ola7 Podcast Show, where we get to talk to, you know, all people from <laughs> people from all walks of life, uh, prophets, business moguls, uh, entertainers, I mean, your celebrities, uh, you name them. And uh, tonight on this uh, program, I'm talking to one of the, should I say, controversial prophetess? <laughs> controversial prophetess, yeah. Uh, if she's controversial, she has on good barapang pamuche to do to show why he very controversial. Her name is uh, Prophetess um, Primrose Miga. So she's here to tell us more. We're getting more pinned deep now in Pichana. Prophetess, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Ola. It's an honor to be here. And how are you doing? How have you been? Ah, by the grace of God, I've been good. Mm -hmm. Yes, um. There have been a lot of bumps mm -hmm. here and there, but I can safely say I'm I'm good. Mm. I'm doing very well. Yes. Yeah, nice. Yes, yes. And we want to know who is this young prophetess? You know, where were you born? And uh, you know, family, early life, everything. Okay, so prophetess Primrose is um, a young woman of God. Mm -hmm. um, I was born here in Harare, uh, in a family of uh, three girls. Mm -hmm. Um, went to school in Sengezi, and um, look, my life has just been, it, it's just been something else. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what, what really marks my life more is more of the work of God. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I can talk about mostly when it comes to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a woman of God. I serve under a ministry called Grace Faith Ministries. Mm -hmm. Um, I was ordained as a pastor. My gifting, though, is in the prophetic. This is why I am a prophetess. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know a lot of people struggle with this prophetess mm -hmm. <laughs> thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so my calling is in the prophetic, mm -hmm. meaning I prophesy mm -hmm. to people, but I also preach and I also teach the word of God. Wow. So basically that is it. No, that's, not, no, that's something else. And being prophetic. When did you receive this calling, like of being of being a, a prophet? Okay, so prophecy, you know, it's a gift you are born with. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, there are people that uh, they don't realize it until later on in life. Mm -hmm. For me, I used to have dreams okay. a lot as I was growing up, mm -hmm. though they were mainly bad dreams. Yes, I used to have dreams, and every time I would tell someone something is going to happen, usually the bad stuff. Okay, you know. Uh, those were the things I would remember. They would actually happen, mm. accidents, deaths, a yes. lot of things, mm -hmm. yes. But I didn't know that it was a prophetic calling mm -hmm. until later on in life when I received Jesus and I started to serve God. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I got mentorship. Um, I think you know my spiritual father, mm -hmm. uh, who you might also deem controversial, yeah. Bishop C.B. Motondo. Mm -hmm. You've had an interview with him some time back. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, he was my, he's my mentor. Mm -hmm. 
So through him, I got to understand my calling. And this is when now I started actually walking in the calling itself. Mm. Yes. That's uh, very powerful. And you mentioned about uh, Bishop um, you know, Motondo. <laughs> uh, very controversial as well. When I interviewed him, you know, we got to uh, unpack <laughs> lots of stuff. And oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, somehow uh, people claim that uh, you and Bishop Motondo, you are married or you're a couple. <laughs> Uh, could you just clarify on that? Okay. So, some would say, no, these guys, you know, probably are just doing your thing. <laughs> but let us know. What, what up? Listen, you know, I've, 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 I've come to understand, people don't usually understand be- the relationship between mentor and mentee relationship. Mm-hmm. Look, he's my spiritual father. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, the truth of the matter is, he You're took married. me. No, I'm not. He took me it's out of marriage. the streets. No, no marriage, none at all. What is Father it? Father and daughter relationship. Really? He took, he took me out of the streets. Uh-huh. When I mean streets, I'm not saying I was in the street streets, okay. but um, he mentored me. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I can't say I, I've got my father. But, but, but well, hold on, then, hold on, then, hold on. Okay. Uh-huh. Is there anything wrong? Mm-hmm. Uh, getting married to your mentor? No, there's nothing wrong with it, but there is no marriage. Like I said, strictly spiritual. Is, is he married? Father, he is married and, you know... Locally? Uh, no, he's married. It does not matter which area. Uh, only uh, like Because really. we, we've never seen her. No, I mean, no, his, uh, his wife. Yeah. Oh, no, she does come to Zimbabwe. No, he's, he's, he's married and... Um, I'm very much single, Ola. Let's put it on the record. Please, single. So just so, put so it out there. So you guys are claiming that uh, Prophet yeah. is married to yes. uh, Bishop Motondo. She is denying all the allegations. He's saying, no, I am not married to Bishop Motondo. But, but you, you, and you I'm seem single. to spend more time together, right? No, because I am, I am his PA. I am... Okay, so you know... Um, I'm a protege, basically. Yeah. Okay, I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> that the you know the person that one of the person that he has trained mm-hmm. to work more in his his calling, the way he does his calling. Yeah. I think I'm one person who's had the privilege to mm. get taught. Yes. You understand. Mm. So let's put it across properly that I am single and don't kill my chances of ever <laughs> getting someone, please. <laughs> I am single. <laughs> don't kill them. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, but you have a son. I've got a son. Um, is, is he from? My son is in Angola. Yeah. He, yeah. I had him very young. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stays in Angola with his father. Mm-hmm. He's been in Angola all his life, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And um, I've got other kids, mm-hmm. which I've got uh, beautiful, beautiful kids. Uh, my favorite one is called Makanakisa. Mm-hmm. She's a girl. She's 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, these, are, these are children that I got through the church oh, yes. that I look after. Um, they are there. They, uh, just to mention a few, there are quite yes. many. So yeah. I, I've got a lot of kids that I, I, I look after mm-hmm. um, that I'm also trying to mentor. Mm-hmm. I think also because uh, my son has been in Angola for oh, most yeah. of his life. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's like that. Mm. Are, you, are you co-parenting or are you just like, okay? It, it's not Since co- you're in the it's, custody of your father. It's, it's not co-parenting. Mm-hmm. I can't lie. Um, there was a bit of a rift okay. for years. Mm-hmm. I didn't see my son. Wow. And um, then I got to see him, I think, after about five years. Mm-hmm. Then I didn't see him again for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now we've uh, we've reunited. Mm-hmm. Um, he's older. He knows how to communicate. How old is he? He's been to Zimbabwe. He's now sixteen. Mm-hmm. He's been to Zimbabwe yeah. last year. He came to Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. So now the relationship is. We've got a good relationship. Now, now, now you you communicating with your with your son. Yes, we've got a very good. Mm-hmm. What, what relationship. was the rift about? All about. Ah, uh, you know, when uh, mother and father just mm-hmm. don't get along, I yeah. think we'll leave it there. Mm-hmm. But you, at the end of the day, it always affects the children. Yeah. Um, and I think when it happened, I was a bit young, a mm-hmm. bit naive, and also not stable, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think the father has done a very good job. Mm-hmm. He's, he's really been good. In, in, in most in cases, we, we, we only hear that, you know, uh, mothers will be, don't try to custody the mothers no, no, until no. the age of 18. Yeah. But in your case, it's really different. It's, how, how so? 
It's different because um, when I had my son, like I said, I was young and there was a time he was not feeling well. So mm -hmm. I made a choice to take him to the father. Um, to the father. Um, and like I said, I was young and really stupid. I think maybe we yes. say it that way yes. and a bit irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So that time it was the right thing to do. It was, it was, I think it was the best thing in that time mm. because the father was more mature, yes. more responsible. Yes. And you can see that because my son turned out very well. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And uh, prophetess, um, what can you say are your primary responsibility as a prophetess? As a prophetess? Yeah. Okay. So the prophetess part is the calling. Mm -hmm. It's uh, when we prophesy, but the work in itself is not just to prophesy. Before that, you are a pastor, meaning you are a shepherd. You take care of uh, the flock, meaning church members. We've got we've got disciples mm -hmm. all over. We've got people that we look after all over. We pray for them, even some that are not in Zimbabwe. Uh, for me, I've got uh, WhatsApp prayer groups. I've got people that I pray for. On, um, online, Facebook, people who have problems. We are there to heal people. We are there to, br to, to, to mend broken hearts. We are there to give people direction. You know, we are there to mentor people. I've, I've, I'm working with a lot of young girls, you know, who say, oh, this is what I'm doing and I want to get out of it. Yeah. And I think for me, it's, 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 it's good because we are coming from a point where we've been there, we've yes. been outside, mm -hmm. we've been in the world, and we've we, we've lived the life yes. out there. So when someone tells me certain things, it's easy to relate. Mm -hmm. So even as you counsel them, you counsel them without judging yes. because you know mm -hmm. already. So b basically that is it. So it's not really about the prophetic. We prophesy yeah. as a calling mm -hmm. to give someone direction. Yeah. And you don't prophesy every day to someone. Mm. But there are people who look at you because they are f not feeling well. Yeah. They call you. They want prayers. Of recent, I was laughing because I've had a lot of people who are giving birth mm. who tell me, oh, I've been in delivery for the past two weeks. Mm. I can't give birth. And then you pray. You know, they deliver. Mm. So I was laughing. I said, I think I'm in the season of babies. <laughs> 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 no, I understand, but uh, you know, um, prophets sometimes they they differ when they when it comes to their roles or maybe duties, yes. uh, their calling. Yes. Some will be like, okay, I'm just you know gifted in this area of maybe healing. Yes. Some will be saying, oh, inini you make money. Yes. Some will be like, in the profit like the the future. Mm -hmm. Um, the profit like the You know. Uh, national issues. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to rain this year. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. which area would you say, okay, this one is my area? Okay, so when you now start talking about Renika, you're now talking about uh, major prophets. Yeah. Like, I believe my spiritual father is a major prophet. Mm -hmm. Uh, he will get prophecies that have to do with the world and mm -hmm. things like that, different countries. But for me, I, 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 I've not received any prophecy yeah. about the country. Yeah. I, I can't lie. God, okay. So I prophesy to individuals. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 I deal with individuals. Do you have uh, such prophecies where you'd say, okay, uh, when I prophesied, ningi, 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 uh, the prophecy came to pass? Plenty. I've got a lot of testimonies, a lot of, I mean, a lot. Sometimes, you know, you'll be speaking to someone and as you're speaking to someone, because it's not just about the future. Yeah. Sometimes you're telling someone what is going on mm -hmm. in that time, in that moment, you're, as you're speaking to them, yes. because this is the mind of God that you are speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about telling someone the future, because sometimes people want to also know what is happening in the now. Yeah. So there are certain things that sometimes I'll be telling someone that, you know, uh, I see this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. And it's happening in that moment. Can you, can you maybe share some examples of, you know, uh, some of your prophecies, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that have impacted in individuals, individuals. Uh, yeah, and, and or the community? The community. So I have, uh, I've given, uh, there is one prophecy that I gave to a guy. Um, I think it was a bit of a painful one because he was ready to get married mm -hmm. and he was very much in love with this girl and he called me and he said uh, prophetess, the guy stays in Mashingo he said prophetess, there is a girl that I want to marry, I'm in love and he was so excited mm. but as he was speaking I said to him I want to tell you, I want to 
speak to you if you allow me to speak to you. And he said, no, 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 go ahead. And I said, look, as I'm speaking to you right now, the girl that you're talking about is with someone. And the person that girl is with is someone that you actually know. And he's like, what do you mean is with someone? I'm, and I said, okay, I was trying to use wisdom. Yes. I'm trying to say to you, the girl that you want to marry is dating someone else. Yeah. And the person that is dating is actually someone who is close to you. And the person the girl was dating, Vangwari Bamdi Kive, that guy. And I remember during that time, I felt very bad. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sounding like a prophet of doom. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and it actually happened that the guy called the girl and was asking her where she was. And I think she was trying to come up with some excuses. Mm -hmm. And he just decided, mm -hmm. and he found the girl there. So... Sometimes it's uh, they, they they come to pass. Sometimes it's actually painful when the bad ones that we give come, <laughs> you know, really come to pass. Yes. Um, I've spoken to 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 someone um, that I saw death, mm -hmm. and they lost a child. Wow. Yeah, and 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 sometimes it's a bit it's a bit painful because you see these things, and um, you know we are not God. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain things that we see that God has already said, and and I believe this is something that we always get asked also ourselves to say, okay, if you saw death, why could you not prevent it? Mm. But mm. it's mm. only God, yeah. you know, yeah. um, that, 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 that allows for certain things to happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes maybe God just shows us to prepare you so that by the time it comes, it doesn't hurt as bad. Yeah. Um, you know, where, where there's a bit of comfort in your spirit. Or you find a way to, to convey the message you, yes, to the person. To the person, okay? yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yes. So, but in, 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 our, in this modern Zimbabwe, you know, uh, society, mm -hmm. uh, do you think people really pay attention to prophecies or prophets uh, that much? Or they're like, ah, no, you know what? I, 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 I think um, there is something that uh, I, I, I always try to, like I said, I mm -hmm. always refer to my spiritual father. He always says this: the prophetic was wrongly, um, introduced. Mm -hmm. So they, there is this thought that the prophetic is flashy. If you're a prophet, you have to have shiny things mm -hmm. and what, and yeah. forgive us. Naturally, I do not know why we end up liking shiny mm. because I think I'm wearing shiny myself. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this, there's this thing that came when the prophetic came where it looked like it was glamorous and what. So when it started, um, it, it started somehow losing its course because even the young girls, they wanted to date prophets. Everyone mm, wanted to be yeah, associated yeah. with a prophet. Everyone mm. wanted to follow a prophet, you know. But um, the truth of the matter is, uh, from what I've seen, I think we are going back where people are now accepting uh, the prophetic again. Why? Because of the things that are happening in the world. People are looking for direction. Out there, all our people are depressed. Right. People are stressed. People are feeling hopeless. Mm -hmm. Um it's so, so people are looking for anything that can bring them hope. Very true. People very, are looking very for true. anything. Yeah, they they you know they just want a word. Mm. You know, I mean, if you are if you are broke, you know, and then you see a prophet appear online, you just want him to say to you, "Oh, I see money coming." Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> you know, yes. so people are looking for hope, and and I believe this is what is also leading people back now to start believing in prophets again. Mm. But there was a time where they lost trust. Okay. Yeah. But do you think that trust is back? It's not yet completely back, mm -hmm. but I believe uh, people can, will eventually, they can pick up that this person is genuine or they are not. They are not. Yeah. There are certain things that they'll pick up mm. that this is genuine or not. Okay. That's, uh, that's interesting. So how do you stay grounded, you know, and maintain your faith, uh, especially in challenging times? One thing that I have come to understand is I was called by God, mm -hmm. not by men. And um, I think when I look at my whole life, mm -hmm. it's enough for me to believe that God is there. When I look at where I've come from, mm -hmm. who I've become, the person I was yesterday and the person I am today is different. Mm -hmm. And for me... There is nothing else that I can say but that it is God, mm. and I think it is what keeps me. It is it is what keeps me strong, and mm. it keeps me mm. it keeps me grounded. Yeah, and um, 
I can say ndakanyururwa ola. Ndakanyururwa. Ndakanyururwa. I I and if looking at uh, uh, you know our zim uh, society mm-hmm. we or maybe churches we seem to have less prophetesses than prophets. Yes. Uh I would want to understand from you Guti why wow. is that you know the case and also uh takaza sa growth ya madzimai cha chayo eh when the leader ma churches akasena say ada vari kunzi ma prophetesses eh tingati here we are moving in the positive uh, positive direction uh kana kuti muri kuti muri kutsikirirwa here what's really happening I think I think what what happens is that when you are a woman um you are judged more than the men mm-hmm. and there is times 10 pressure to prove yourself mm-hmm. more than men yeah and there is a certain way that people expect to see you mm-hmm. if i dress in a particular way yeah. it's judged but if a man comes and prophesizes dressed in a dif- in a particular way mm-hmm. no one is bothered right. so i feel we are more judged um and um there's 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 too much um, um, uh, assumption just like what you were saying that mm-hmm. oh you have a relationship yeah. all this and that there's an assumption that when a woman gets to a particular place she's uh, to put it raw she slept with mm-hmm. someone or she's doing this or yes. she's doing that or yeah. she's doing this mm-hmm. and i think because of that a lot of women end up staying in the shell because once you come out you know that you are ready for the public to yes. judge you yes. and to attack you mm-hmm. so a lot of people they don't a lot of women who don't want to deal with that except for those that want drama and scandals yeah. or whatever who are ready you, you know a lot of women they they they, they pull back yeah. in their calling and also a lot of women in ministry it's very difficult for them to find men who will who are secure enough to allow them to shine or yeah. to be mm-hmm. it's it's very difficult mm-hmm. so it's either you 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 get they get married to someone and um, that person has already found them at a particular yes, level yes. and then they are secure enough mm-hmm. to allow them to be there yeah. and they push them mm-hmm. but then there are some men that will not allow for a woman to be there and you know your woman is on top mm-hmm. and you know the moment you become this look my inbox is full yeah. of men sending me messages mm. uh mama pray for me or oh, prophetess or oh, pray pray for me i have this i i the dream i this i yes. this and some of them they call you so you can't restrict so it's like you become open yeah. you understand you become open so some people if they don't understand it it becomes very very difficult mm-hmm. because i notice that a lot of people who are drawn to me are men they are the ones you know men will just go on facebook they'll see you they'll be like oh okay maybe she's she, hot she, she looks cute yeah mm-hmm. you know oh prophetess i've got this then i'll then i'll start my story oh, <laughs> later yes, on yes. so it's not easy to be But a woman what, 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 uh, it brings me to my next question kuti that's if can are a prophet yes. now a prophetess and, and in this case you are single like you said yes varume it's 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 just the opposite men it's the opposite it's men you like i said my inbox is full of men who want prayer points who want one on ones who mm-hmm. want so the biggest challenge is is that one two The biggest challenge is a lot of hate mm-hmm. from women. Um women don't support each other. That is the biggest challenge. And I think men support each other more than women support each other. So you find even most of the attacks that you get on social media they are coming from women mm-hmm. and not from from men. Why is that so? I think women generally we we just we don't support each other. I don't know there's just too much hate. Yeah. I I I don't understand why. Ha ah, it's uh it's quite tricky. Uh, it's quite tricky so how do you handle such pressure coming from men you know when go that would some offer ah you just deal with it i mean the same way you've just been dealing with people trying to ask you out and you don't want to go out with them yeah. you look you get used to it and you become diplomatic and as someone who's spiritual they will always be 
an answer where you keep them focused mm -hmm. on the spiritual side. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you you make the spiritual side sound very intense yeah. that they yeah. they are like, mm -mm, I cannot I try. Oh, like, yes. let, let, yeah, exactly. let me not try. So exactly. you make the spirituality, uh -huh. you know, as you speak to them, you make it very intense. What about in the event that you really feel like, okay, this man is also okay. There's, there's no, 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 no. I'm, you know? I'm, no, I'm not there yet. I believe that. But well, your problem is, if you, if you keep on doing that, you remain <laughs> single until Jesus comes. <laughs> well, <laughs> when I said I was single, I did not say I am taken by Jesus. Yeah. This, I, I am taken by Jesus for now spoken for. Uh -huh. But look, um, in our calling, you also it's not also good to just make a decision. Mm -hmm. You It has to be from God. Yeah. Because what we do is very sensitive. So God has to prepare the right person mm -hmm. who actually understands your calling and yeah. be able to push you and promote your calling. Mm. So you can't just make a decision that, oh, because he looks handsome, because this person looks good, or they've, no, you can't. The for person the, has to fear God first. For the love of money, we can't really separate money and profits. Oh, my God. We can't really separate the two. <laughs> for the love of money, <laughs> how are you making your money? Um, so we, okay, I do other businesses. I do business. Uh, I don't charge for one-on-one. -on -one. Normally, while it's here, there, mm -hmm. most prophets, they don't disclose their businesses. They just say, I'm into my businesses. I mean, today I'm going to put you on this post so that you disclose your <laughs> business so that we know. Uh, because you're a prophetess. Um, okay. When you do not disclose your business, we think otherwise. Okay, okay, people, maybe <laughs> you are getting money from people, from the congregants. But okay, let, let us know. Tell, tell us more. No. Mm. Okay, so... I know that most of the time people think um, prophets are uh, one-on-one. That's yeah. what they think people make money on. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, how I was mentored was freely you were given, freely you give. So mm -hmm. for me, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't do that. Yeah. My calling, I, I, I think maybe that's what God, you know, put in me. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, so, but we've got um, quite a few things that I do. Uh, we've got a security company that mm -hmm. we've got. Um, I've got an aesthetics clinic that does beauty. Mm -hmm. When I mean beauty, I mean making women to, you know, look, look nice. Look nice. Okay, nicer. Uh, nicer, <laughs> nicer. They are already beautiful, uh -huh. but just to make them look nicer, mm -hmm. you know, um, I have that. And uh, currently, we are actually working on a restaurant. So, so there's that. Mm. Yes, there's there's that. Okay, that's uh, that's powerful. We want to now get into deeper issues. Okay. I'm now going to put the prophetess on the spot. I was just asking those lighter questions. But right now, stand by as we get, as we dive deeper. Okay, we'll be right back after the short break. Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. Welcome back to the All Us 7 Hour Podcast show. And here on the, on the spot, I'm talking to Prophetess Primrose Miga. And uh, now, like I said earlier, we are now getting deeper. Uh, go deeper, go deeper into real issues. So, prophetess, in April, uh, you all over, you were all over social media. Um, it is allegedly that yourself and uh, ten others, including your husband, like you said, she he is not your husband, but in this case, he was, you know, uh, cited as your husband. Uh, we arrested on allegations of kidnapping, um, <laughs> according to the H Metro of uh, April twenty-three. It says in a court. A Congolese ex-convict, Charles Motondo, who is also a pastor, and his girlfriend, self-styled 
prophetess Primrose Miga of Christ Faith Ministries have been granted bail after spending the week in remand prison. They are embroiled uh, in a kidnapping case. The couple and their accomplices are accused of teaming up with a Chinese Jew to kidnap a Chinese <laughs> businessman and demanding 120,000 US dollars as a ransom. Close court. Prophetess, can you give us the full details of what transpired? And I expect you not to lie because you are a woman of God. Of course. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I think before I, I enter into the story, one thing I learned is um, never to believe everything you read, number one. Number two, um, you know, when you are in ministry, I think when certain things happen, it's either God allows them to happen or the devil obviously will be fighting you. So um, this story is actually a story that is uh, false. Mm -hmm. um, we were falsely accused. Um, I think now it's easier for me to say it as all charges have been withdrawn and uh, there's a court affidavit that is there to prove that this person actually said, no, I was not kidnapped. Mm -hmm. So basically what happened was um, I've got two friends um, of mine from China uh, who are Chinese and we've been friends for years and uh, they came uh, to see me, I was actually not feeling well on that mm -hmm. day, you know, and they came to see me mm -hmm. and uh, we were discussing because there was a transaction that um, they wanted to do. We were talking about buying generators mm -hmm. for the church. And um, so these guys, uh, one of the guys, um, I will not mention names, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. so one of the guys, um, he did a transaction uh, to China for another guy. And that guy was supposed to pay money in Zimbabwe. And that guy sent money. A few minutes later, he, he reversed the transaction. Mm. After reversing the transaction, he started calling the guy, and this guy was not picking up. So we were actually together. Mm -hmm. And he say, and he was saying to me, oh, this guy is not picking up, so we want to try and, to, and, and, and you know, go and meet him. Um, but they didn't have a direct relationship with him. They had been introduced by another guy mm -hmm. who is the so-called guy that we kidnapped. Mm. You understand? Okay. Um, so I want you to go with me here. So the guy who introduced them is the guy that they claimed we kidnapped. Right. So we, as a church, we have one-on-ones, people who come so that they can come for one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. So on that day, there were certain people that were supposed to come for one-on-one -on -one for prayers, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to meet the men of God. Yeah. Manju, the Chinese guys were my friends. Okay. They have nothing to do with the bishop. Mm -hmm. These are my friends, and they came to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so one of, the, one of our guys then said, okay, since you guys are going where, where you're going, let's go together. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I'll pick up the other guys who are supposed to come for one-on-one. -on -one. So they left together, and we thought everything was okay. Mm. And when they went there, what really happened or what transpired, I wasn't there, so I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But what I know is later on, my Chinese friend called me and said, oh, we are coming back to you, to where you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are with our friend, the one they claimed was kidnapped. Mm. And um, anyway, we'll tell you what happened. So they came back. And when they came back, it was my two Chinese friends and the other Chinese guy whom I don't know till now. I don't even know his name mm -hmm. up to now. I, I just saw him briefly mm -hmm. uh, because they were outside. So my friend then said to me, look, um, you know, that guy, when we got there, he, he ran away from us. So this friend of ours now is trying to call him so that he comes, mm -hmm. so that, you know, he gives us back our money. Mm -hmm. So that was the discussion. And... Um, but if he doesn't, we are now going to report to the police. Mm -hmm. So I think the, 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 their friend kept on communicating with the other guy. They, they kept on talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, after about an hour, the guy didn't show up. Mm -hmm. But he had said to them he was following. He was on the way. Yeah. And I said to them, it's been over an hour and this guy is not, yet not here. here. I don't think this guy is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the friend called him. 
And he said, look, these guys are now going to the police. We are leaving. And the guy said, no, 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 no. I'm coming. Yeah. So, look, I was not in this conversation. This Chinese guy was talking to his friend. Mm -hmm. this, this is what I now heard after everything, you know, after everything went down. So he kept on saying, look, I'm coming. So the guy actually sh uh, um, uh, sent him a location. Mm -hmm. And the location he sent him was our premises. Mm. This is, you know, it's yes. our premises. Yes. So he sent a location. And if someone is kidnapped, why would, we, why would someone send location to your personal mm -hmm. premises? Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, this is, this is where we were. So um, a few minutes later, I think it was another 45 minutes, um, my friend said, ah, look, I think we are now leaving. Mm -hmm. A few minutes later, the guy calls and says, no, 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 no. I'm actually coming, but I'm getting lost. Mm -hmm. It was now a bit dark. Because when my friend came to see me, it was around 4.35. Okay. So this was now around 2.7. Mm -hmm. PM. So it, PM, yes. So it was now a bit dark. So next thing, the guy says, look, I'm getting lost. So we had, um, they, they, there were some guys who had come for one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Those were supposed to go back. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, since these guys are going to be going back soon, um, let's just get into the car. We meet up with this guy. Yeah. We bring him back. Mm -hmm. So they went out. What happened, what took place, Ola, I didn't know because I was sitting mm -hmm. on the sofa and a few minutes later, I just saw a gun in my head. And Fine. I didn't... From, I, from, from nowhere. nowhere, yes. I think it was about 20, 30 minutes later, mm -hmm. a guy just walked in and he had a gun on my head. Mm -hmm. At first, I actually thought this was an armed robbery, like mm -hmm. we are being robbed or something. Mm -hmm. And I hear this guy identifying himself and he says, oh, I'm from the CID. Uh, you guys have just kidnapped a Chinese national. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Chinese national? <laughs> Which Chinese national? Mm -hmm. And outside, the Chinese national they are claiming has been kidnapped was actually on the ground with his hands up because he is scared. He does not know what is going on. Okay. He thinks there's also an armed robbery. Mm -hmm. So everyone who's in the premises thinks there's an armed robbery taking place. Mm. You understand? They don't know that it's police. Police. Until they started saying, no, no, everyone sit here. You guys have just kidnapped. Um, uh, 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 we heard that you are armed. You are what? Armed... Mm. Oh, so it was not making sense. Yeah. Next thing, our guys who had gone, they showed up. They were in a car. And we are being told people were hurt. Mm. But I think um, that other part is something that I can't disclose fully because I believe that um, it, it, it's something that uh, the lawyers are still dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I think for, 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 for other people who went through that, I think maybe it would not be fair for me to speak about Maybe that part, but um, you, you, you're referring to which part now? Okay, so were you saying so they were hurt, or they what? were hurt. Yes. How? So we heard that they. Okay, so they were gunshots that had been fired mm -hmm. to them. To them, because the police your believed other, um, our other friends. Okay. Yes, because the police believed that they were um, armed robbers, armed, armed kidnappers, and they were trying to run away. But this was like in the night, mm -hmm. and how do you? How do you stop when the police tells you if, you, if the police does not have a police car mm -hmm. and they don't identify themselves as the police and they just come with guns? How do you stop and say, oh... Do you, do, but do you really understand uh, that it's also a tricky situation whereby the police officers like the CID you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, team, um, when they are after the armed robbers, mm -hmm. do you think they will say, oh, okay, wait, guys, Here's my idea of a police officer. Yes. Or they don't. It, it's tricky, exactly. Right? But it's because they'll be like, okay, because normally these armed robbers are not going to foot. Yes. If they are ready to shoot as well. Exactly. Uh, what do you call it? My exchange. My exchange, or, exchange yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. foot. My shootouts. Mm -hmm. the, the next thing. Yeah. My they, were, they will be always ready. That I look, that I, I don't dispute. Yeah. And 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 I believe that the call that they got mm -hmm. um 
and what they were told mm -hmm. really made them believe that there yes. was something going on yes. and that there was uh, someone who was in danger. Mm -hmm. That we, I, I can't dispute that yes. because even when we heard how the how it was reported, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I believe they would come obviously, you know, ready, believing that oh, we are coming to find people with yes. guns. I yes. believe that mm -hmm. that that was that, that that that's that's not disputed. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is, it's the same thing for the guys that they met mm -hmm. who. Who, who so okay so what actually happened was as the guy was calling to say he was coming we did not know that he went to the police and he lied that his friend had been kidnapped mm. you understand mm. so he was in actual fact coming with the police so he knew that if these guys leave what what he, were his uh, intentions what were his intentions so this guy in the anger of Aramunumari, mm -hmm. you understand? The Chinese guy. The Chinese guy. And, but I also believe that when he did what I did, I think he did not think that it would go so far. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand. Yeah. I think he went, but he did not realize, number one, he did not know who was there. Mm -hmm. He didn't know there were other people involved. He didn't know there were other people in this place. Okay. So I, I, I think for him, it was a case, mm -hmm. but without knowing that it was going to implicate every, every other, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. I think that was basically it. Because when they, when they now came, you know, it, it looked like even they were surprised to see so many people, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. around. But seeing so many people also made them think like, oh, this is a crew that mm. is, mm. <laughs> you know, that is planning, you know, certain things. Our our own security guard ran away and actually reported that there's an armed robbery taking place at home. At home yeah. Because no one, we everyone, we didn't know what was going exactly. on. And that was the truth. Mm -hmm. It was, it was quite... It was quite traumatic, but I think in that moment, we thought it was something that was going to play itself out because we were all innocent. Yes. So when we went to, 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 to the police, mm -hmm. we still knew that we were innocent. Yeah. And we still thought, okay, so this Chinese guy is going to come and he's going to say, no, that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. We had our own issues and whatever. But look, it, it, it didn't go that way. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe sometimes God allows for things to happen. And um, if you are in ministry, I, 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 I suppose there's certain things sometimes that you go through, so a certain persecution. And um, it went through to Thursday, it went through to Friday, we got to the courts. Mm -hmm. And um, when we got to the courts, that was the very interesting thing. Um, I didn't know I had enemies. Mm. And I didn't know, you know, when you're doing your things, it's like you, Ola, you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And... You don't, you know, you are not going out there looking for fights. Exactly. Uh, but I think you do look for fights because you people put people on a spot. Mm -hmm. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, you don't think you are affecting anyone. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Yeah. You are just doing you. Yeah. And I, I think I've believed that so much about myself that I thought I was just doing me. I'm yeah. moving in my calling. Mm -hmm. I'm living my life. But you don't see that people are watching you. And um, I actually got to find out that a lot of people... A lot of journalists were paid. Um, um, of course, I now know by who, but then that's something else. No, actually, those journalists will be like, okay, you're now lying. So who paid them? Uh, it would be prudent I, for you maybe yeah. then to say I think, I it's, think, it's so and so because you're claiming the journalists because yes. the stories are yes. all over. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so it was that it was other men of God mm -hmm. in ministry. So it became, you know, a fight men of God who were now, uh, you know, trying to see how... Who is that can, man of God? Uh, I think... I oh, think, do, uh, you, do you have proof? There, there is a certain level of proof, mm -hmm. but I think, um, you know, I'm a woman of God mm -hmm. and I'm very sensitive in that um, this is also a man of God or, um, you know... Uh, that has people that follow them, that mm -hmm. has people that are um, believing in them. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to say their name because you don't want to also break the spirits of... Uh, but how, how did you get to know that? How did you get the information that uh, there was uh, a man of God at play? Yeah. Another hand. Mm. Um, it, it, was, it was some journalists that called, mm -hmm. yeah, that did the articles. They actually said, look, we were paid to... Uh, write articles and smear them all mm -hmm. over and, yes. you know, make sure that the story goes mm -hmm. out there. And look, it, it, this is what is happening in ministry, Ola. Okay, but I understand. But one thing that I'm not understanding, mm -hmm. why was these journalists calling you when, in actual fact, they received 
money from the prophet and they're now calling you yes okay was it because she wanted also uh, part of it no, this was from you? so this was oh so this was after mm -hmm. everything had happened yes and and i believe you know journalists always get information yeah and i think this is when people started picking up that the story was in in fact a lie mm -hmm. so you know sometimes people when they see that uh, this is a lie they now try to come into your good books mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, though the person was not lying yeah you understand but like i said um mm -hmm. this is what is happening in ministry now maybe just to say it uh, or the truth of the matter is a lot of people are being threatened in ministry mm. and this is the truth a lot of women of god are being threatened a lot of men of god are being threatened by other men of god who believe that they are more powerful who believe that they are on top mm -hmm. you know and with the moment they see someone is going up it it becomes a war mm -hmm. and if you're not submitting to them if you're not in their clique if you're not in their clan then it's a problem mm -hmm. and I, i'll tell you that ministry is worse than politics Ministry is worse than politics. Why? Because um, I believe if someone believes they've got God backing them up, if they believe that mm -hmm. they and, and and they are doing wicked things, believing God is backing them up, then mm -hmm. you cannot change that person. Mm -hmm. So they are worse. Ministry has people who are worse than. Uh, politicians it's got it's got thugs it's mm -hmm. got mafia it's mm -hmm. it's got the real thugs are in the church why do you say so because of experience what i've what i've seen what mm -hmm. i've understood in ministry you get men of god that make threats that mm -hmm. you know if you associate with so and so mm -hmm. we'll kill you all these things we we've, we've had them mm. it's it's I, I'm, i'm i'm telling you that um ministry is worse than politics mm -hmm. it's 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 worse and you know there are certain people that have got a god complex that believe that they have been called they believe they just hear from god themselves mm -hmm. they are the ones that talk to god mm -hmm. and people like that they don't have a conscience you know and the thing is they are doing it behind the pulpit mm -hmm. and using the bible to hide behind it and every time you know even if people try to wake up certain things and people try to say oh this is what is happening mm -hmm. in ministry yeah. people then you know it's 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 hidden yeah. why because these people also know how to you know men women of god they know how to threaten you with curses mm -hmm. so you've got a lot of people who are being abused who are being a lot of things are being done in the church but people can't say it out loud because you are told that if you do this or if you leave my church oh i'm going to curse you or you know nothing is going to work out in your life or those are the kind of things that are happening in ministry yeah. and i feel look i i know it is happening mm. and mm. this is why i feel i have to say it out loud that right now uh, we are dealing with a lot of gangsters mm. assuming that they are men of god mm. a lot of them yeah Wow. A lot of them. So It's quite sad. Yeah, so then eventually like I said, um we were remanded into custody uh over the weekend mm -hmm. um awaiting bail and I went to remand prison mm. at one of Chikuru before prison. How was the experience? Oh my gosh. Wow. I think the first the night okay, so it wasn't about that. So I was crying and mm. I remember I was wearing high heels. Oh. <laughs> and um, in Riemann. No, no, before I went to Riemann okay. in the court I was in high heels, right? Mm -hmm. And looking all nice and I was walking towards Chigumba Kumba. Oh. But in front of me there were like men sitting there who were going to Riemann and I was passing they started <laughs> whistling. <laughs> and they were saying who's that? You know. Hey. <laughs> you Welcome. know. And I entered into that that big bus, truck that big truck yeah. it's so cold like it's so cold and i got in and i sat next to this uh girl who was there and next to me i was next to the prison warden and i think what god did was i think god prepared people for me because i was crying and because i didn't understand what was going on you know it was like a nightmare everything yeah, was just happening fast roller coaster everything was happening fast and this girl started talking to me from nowhere the prison warden and she's like i don't know what is going on with you but i know that god does everything for a reason and you know she started talking to me she started look 
we are men of God. We are women of God, but the truth is, we are flesh mm. <laughs> before the spirit. Yeah, exactly. And when things happen, they really hit hard. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, it's yeah, like assuming kuti munaria no inte dagaro wa pumps pa goats ine windo arwadzi. No, we will. You still feel the pain. And in as much as I still had my faith in God, I still believed that God was in this and everything. But I was crying. I was mm. broken mm. because I felt like, but I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. I don't even know what's going on. So I. I was crying all the way. I will not lie. Mm. And um, when we got out, I think what was so painful was being given a prison number. I was no longer being called by name. Mm -hmm. uh, my they gave me a prison number five nine uh, five ninety stroke twenty four. <laughs> 590 stroke 24, 24. Hey. was like my name hey. and and you know and in that moment you are no longer prophetess mm. who everyone is so used to you know when you get to a place and people are like prophetess Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you are the same. Yeah. And you know, you are sent into a room and you're told, uh, take off your clothes, put it in this torn, torn bag. The bag was so torn, you know, and I remember I had my high heels, my dress and my Gucci glasses. <laughs> And 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 I remember the prison warden is she was writing Gucci glass. Hey. <laughs> she was even laughing. And they said this is your uniform and you know naturally yellow one. The yellow one, but naturally, Ola, I don't, you know, I don't like to wear short things. Yeah. But this was a little short. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And, and you can't choose what yeah. to wear. So yes. I wore this little yellow uniform mm -hmm. and now I was being told now you are going to the cell and because we got there in the evening and they before that they said each sadza was brought in a bucket. Right. In a bucket. Yellow you, you're used this to, brown uh, sadza. nice dinner plates and everything. And, uh, sadza. This time around is a big bucket. It was in a big bucket mm. but I couldn't eat because like I was straight like I was saying I was crying. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I went to the cell as I got to the cell we were given blankets mm -hmm. uh the blankets were a bit cleanish mm -hmm. but you, you know it's yeah. you know it was i i had it's to never the same with those at home yeah, yeah but I, I i i i readjusted i think in that moment there was a bit of a readjustment to say you are not home yeah and if you're gonna go through this if you're not going to get an anxiety attack mm -hmm. or a panic attack or depression, because I've struggled yeah. before some yeah. years back, I struggled mm -hmm. with it. So I was just trying to hold myself not to get anxious. And I said, you need to readjust. So I went. The truth of the matter is when I got there, I was received so well. Mm. I was received with yeah, um, prisoners. Yeah, yeah, prisoners yeah. are some of the, I met some of the nicest people in yes, prison and they yes. are so genuine. They are true to themselves. Mm -hmm. There's no pretense. Yeah. If they are guilty, you hear someone saying guilt. I'm guilty. I mm. did this. I did that. The innocent ones, you keep on hearing them say, look, I'm innocent. Mm. And there was, there was this love where I got there and they said, um, I was trying to still hide the fact that I'm a prophetess. Yeah, yes. Why? Because I was saying I don't want people coming to ask for prayers oh, because, yes. because in this moment I'm crying. It's um, about uh, me. Yes. I was trying for that moment too, you know. Yeah. But the moment I got there, I met someone who knew me. Mm. And she's like, oh my God, prophetess, you are here. I am hey. so happy. And... <laughs> uh, and she was so excited. She yes. said, Oh my god, she started telling people mm. she's a prophetess. She's hey. a, and before you know it, people were now saying, Please, will you pray for us? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, first yeah, night, I first night I went, I slept, mm -hmm. got through the first night, but I woke up the second uh, Saturday. I remember I was just crying, mm. I was just crying and I was speaking to God. I was asking God a lot of questions. Is this me? Is this what? Then I got out. I said, I want to assess the environment. I saw women who were plating each other. I saw women, they were busy doing their chores, washing their uniforms. Mm -hmm. And for those that have already been sentenced, you see them looking so clean. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got these very nice uniforms and you can tell someone is just adjusted yes. and accepted that I'm here yeah. and this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. So they'll be actually looking very good, Wow, you know? And um, I went round, and I think the only thing that I didn't like was having to bath in front of people. Oh, <laughs> but you had like a privacy. That was the worst one. Oh, so you, you, you actually bathed in you front bath of everyone? And the toilets in front of, of everyone. 
Jeez. Everything is done in front of everyone. I mean, they can't allow hey. you to have somewhere where there's a door. Ka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no doors, no yeah. doors anyway. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, I get it. Uh -huh. So when you are entering, wherever you are entering, yes. people are seeing you. Oh. They are watching. Hey. So it was that was the that was the sh that was like the culture shock. But you, you, you then adjust it as well. I had to uh, look. Uh, you are now there. There's nothing that you're doing, and you are not going anywhere. <laughs> I, I'm just imagining a prophet is is he, is he narrating this story. I mean, it was. Oh I'm yeah. having my own vision here. I'm just having my own picture. Prophet is just there. Oh yes, yes. She's she's bopping. Oh yes, in front of in front of everyone, in front of us, by the way, <laughs> because we'll be watching. And people are walking in and out, and but the thing is, no one judges anyone, oh, and yeah. no one cares. Oh yeah. That is the honest truth. Is people no. Case. Oh yeah. You understand? Someone yeah. will come. I, I remember bathing, and someone came. So the you you are bathing here, right? Yes. And the toilets are there. And I remember bathing, and someone just coming to use the toilet. Hey. Yes, in front of me, and oh. I'm bathing, and they are busy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really busy, Ola. And you are in front of you like this. How? And they are not bothered. And I remember another girl walked in, <laughs> and they start having a conversation. <laughs> It's like you, we don't care anymore. No, no one. We don't cares. care. No one cares because this is the situation exactly, we are here. Exactly. It, and because if you try to think about it, yeah. you kill yourself. Yes, of course. And of really, there's nothing to kill yourself because they take all the ropes hey. or anything, you know. Yeah, everything. So the day went by. I remember my family coming to visit, and the first moment it was all tears and tears mm -hmm. and tears, mm -hmm. and you know, I told them how I was doing, but yeah. I was okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, they left another night, but the night uh, was good. I started hearing people's stories. Yes. You know, oh, I did this. Oh, I committed this crime. Oh, my husband used to do this, and then I murdered them, so I'm here for murder. Yes. Oh, I'm in here because I was accused of armed robbery. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm here because of fraud, and all these things. Yeah. And and like I said, those who are genuine, they are true to their story. Yes. They don't lie. Yeah. They'll tell you yeah. exactly how, what they mm. did, how they did it. Exactly. You know? Then the ones that are innocent, which were quite a lot, will tell you, oh, you know, I had a friend, I had a, I had a, I had a fight with a friend, and um, we did not agree on certain things, and then because she had given me money, she mm. went to report me for this, and next thing, I, I'm, I'm in I'm here. In, yeah. A lot of people set up by friends, family, mm. lovers, that one, that was so sad for me. Eish. A lot of innocent people were, are, are, are also there. And so then, apart, apart from that, uh, uh, Prophet, so what lessons can you teach, you know, uh, that you learned from prison. this whole uh, yeah incident. incident and also the the prison life i think the prison life toughened me up mm -hmm. i've always been somebody i'm one of those people who've always been scared of being attacked you know cyber bullied i've always been scared so most of the time i don't come out because i am scared of attack mm -hmm. but i remember the f being told oh your name is all over social media and people were worried and the first thing i said was uh, i hope they put pictures of me dressed nicely oh yeah that's the only thing i could say uh, yes. and they were surprised and i said because there's nothing i can do you can't control what people are going to say about that you true. that's the first thing so it, it it made me learn to toughen up number one number two it made me understand that in as much as we are people of God, um, we say we love, but the love is not so, so, so genuine. Mm -hmm. it, it taught me a different kind of love. Yeah. And um, where not to judge people. Uh, most of the time when we hear someone is in prison, what what we judge? Hey, akaita, akato jita, akaita say. Yeah. But there are people that are there they who didn't do and who are innocent. Mm. So it also taught me not to judge people. Yeah. I, I I now look at situations and I judge them differently. It um it made me also to understand that uh and I'm saying this uh don't take me wrong, yeah. but it also made me to understand that a lot of people are using the law to their own advantage and uh they are using the law to oppress people, they are using the law to attack people. That was one thing that I also learned. And uh, look, I, it, it's something that I don't know what can be done about it. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, but that is the honest truth that mm -hmm. the law is mostly used to actually hurt people. So if I feel like, you know, I'm having issues, I'm not so happy with you and, you know, that's, that's, that's another thing that I also learned. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Above all, I learned that God is in every situation. God is in it. It doesn't matter whether but, but you are. One would wonder, I, I know and understand, you know, from those in comment section will be asking, okay, mm -hmm. this whole incident as a prophetess, mm -hmm. I'm not going to remember you want to in advance. Okay, so let me tell you this. 
Um, I was in fasting in March and April because I was preparing for a conference in Gabon. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, I actually came out of prison going to Gabon to preach. And, uh, but before that, I was in fasting for about 21 days. Mm -hmm. And there was a verse. When I finished fasting, my prayer was really about anointing and more grace. And I wanted, you know, mm -hmm. God to, you know, yeah. do miracles and a lot of things when I went to Gabon. That's mm -hmm. what I was uh, praying for. And I remember when I got out, um, the verse that uh, God gave me was in Luke. And the verse was saying, Simon, Simon, um, the devil has asked of you that he may sift you as wheat, mm -hmm. but I have prayed for you. And when you come back, strengthen your brothers. Mm -hmm. And I did not understand what it meant up until what happened happened, mm -hmm. that the devil had asked of me and um, God had say to him, mm -hmm. you can touch her, but there are certain things that you cannot do. Mm -hmm. But by the time she comes out, she'll be strengthened. And that was exactly it. And mm. before that, I got another prophecy, which was very interesting. And I told the people in the church two weeks before, and I said, God said, I'm not in a season of putting makeup because I like makeup. So I started going to church without putting makeup, but I didn't know it was just preparing me for prison for because prison. you can't put makeup in prison. Yeah, in prison. <laughs> oh, so yeah. certain things were happening, but you not. Just I didn't pick it up. No. Yeah, so, I didn't. okay, this is it. Yeah, ah, but no. afterwards, that's when you start saying, oh, but this, but mm. this, but, you know. Before I, ask, before I ask you the next question, I, I, I don't really understand why, you know, prophets and scandals or prophets and controversies, be it true or not, or not mm -hmm. are just like, you know. I think um, you need to understand if you look at the prophets, even um, in the Bible, sorry, <coughs> sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the prophets, you look at Elijah yeah. when he went to speak to, you know, to King Ahab, uh, you need to understand that Jezebel was after him. Mm. If you look at Jeremiah, half of his ministry, when he started his ministry, people did not accept him. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the prophets in the Bible, you know, it's, um, I think it's, 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 you know, for people who, interpret the mind of God, there's two things there. There is people who interpret the mind of God, then change it mm -hmm. to suit themselves. Yeah. Then there's people who interpret the mind of God and it is the mind of God. But generally dealing with people that see what you don't see, mm -hmm. that hear what you don't hear, yeah. you know, that, you know, understand what you don't understand i think it's it's there's it's it's always not mm -hmm. easy and like i said when the prophetic came there was an, a different understanding of it so because of that it's always um it's always easily caught up in scandals mm -hmm. and, and 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 i think it always makes nice headlines yeah <laughs> Of course. Yeah. But uh, you're not just a, a prophetess. You know, uh, you have led uh, in various um, organizations such as uh, the board chairperson or, uh, for Zimbabwe Allied Youth in Mining. Mm -hmm. uh, what inspired you to pursue, you know, a path in uh, leadership and entrepreneurship? Um, I think <clears throat> when I was growing up, I've always been headstrong. I thought, and I was quite uh, talkative, mm -hmm. I've gotten a bit quieter now, yeah. but that time I used to be very talkative, so mm -hmm. I I always wanted to be in, 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 in politics, that's the truth, mm -hmm. I wanted to be in politics, so anything that allowed me to be at the forefront, yeah. that is the honest truth, I used mm -hmm. to do it, I, yeah. it was not that I was inspired by yeah. business, yeah. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. I just wanted anything that would allow me to be at the <laughs> forefront speaking, that okay. is the honest truth. No, I understand, <laughs> and what motivated you to join the Youth Africa Leadership Initiative and uh, you know other youth leadership programs? No, just um, getting to network, getting to understand what other youths mm -hmm. um, are doing, getting to know other youths, and obviously traveling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, changing and sharing experiences. I think uh, it creates, it's it's good for, 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 for platforms. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this day and age, in order for you to be known or to make an impact, sometimes it's not just about being yeah. known, but for what we do, 
in order for us to make an impact, there has to be a platform. Mm -hmm. So in order for someone who is looking, let's say, for healing, they've mm -hmm. tried everything, uh, they have to know that, oh, there is a certain woman of God who oh, yeah. can, you know, pray for me for this issue. So in order for that to happen, you need a platform. True. You understand. So s most of these programs, I've, I've, I've come to understand that in as much as youths, we talk about this, but it's more of creating platforms, mm -hmm. networking, and, you know, exchanging ideas. Okay. Basically, yeah. And how is your role you know, as an ambassador under under young diplomats, uh, United Nations, you know, uh, impacted your your approach to leadership in Zimbabwe. Um, I think I've learned a lot of diplomacy. Mm -hmm. I've, I've 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 learned how to deal with situations, how to understand situations. Also, thanking God for wisdom, mm -hmm. but uh, it helps a lot in, in 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 diplomacy. You know what to say, where to say it, how to say it. You know how to carry yourself. You know how to deal with situations. You know how to handle certain matters. And uh, what does um, being a strategic and innovative leader mean to you? And, you know, how do you apply these qualities in your various roles? I think for me, it's being able to separate uh, the difference. So there is, there is the prophetess. Mm -hmm. In me, there is primrose. Yes. There is the leader mm -hmm. who sometimes is affiliated in the politics or yes. in business mm -hmm. um i think i think i've managed to i in as much as i can separate it mm -hmm. i can I, i've learned to separate myself in different roles yes. but being able to keep the spirituality in each role mm -hmm. that in as much as um i can go and i'm dealing with business but there's still the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. even if i'm doing uh business, even if I'm leading people, mm -hmm. even if you are in a business set up, but you still bring God in it, uh, wherever you are, mm -hmm. you still manage to, you know, bring uh, the, 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 the real you in it, yes. which is the spiritual yes. me. So I, 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 I think for me, that's what has helped me a lot mm -hmm. that I can be, uh, I can be talking business, but still my spirituality mm -hmm. is there. I can be uh, talking with the youth, uh, you know, uh, about, oh, don't do this, don't do that, or, you know, but the spirituality is still there. Then there's the prophetess yeah. who is, who I am walking in no. now, and, uh, yeah. And uh, speaking of, those, I mean, separating roles and just managing, how do you balance, you know, your your multiple roles, such as being a director at CMB, as CBM uh, Productions, uh, running an aesthetic uh, clinic, and also managing a non-profit organization? Okay, so the focus really is on the business side. You get to have people that do so. You learn to assign tasks mm -hmm. to people. Uh, but I, my, 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 my focus area, I think for me is more on the calling side. I think my, my look, I, I love my ministry more yes, than yes. other things. Mm -hmm. Um, I do come into these roles when need be, mm -hmm. but the truth is most of my time when you will find me, I am in my calling mm -hmm. as a woman of God, as a pastor. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe I value more, more than any other roles that yeah. I've got. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your work in uh, philanthropy is notable, uh, Prophet Esprim. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us more about uh, your initiative with the Hands of Hope Foundation? So the Hands of Hope Foundation actually was started by my spiritual father, Bishop C.B. Motondo, as mm -hmm. you said. Um, and uh, he started this in 2017, mm -hmm. reaching out to the widows. You know, um, we did quite a lot of work. And I remember even in COVID, we did quite a lot of work giving out food, um, taking care of the widows. Um, I personally, my, 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 my uh, passion is in widows. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 been a journey we try to be there where we can you know we try to come in we try to fit in where god allows us to fit in yeah. unfortunately you can't end all the problems yeah, you know you can only do so much but it's been it's been an amazing journey so mm -hmm. since 2017 i started uh, working um, in that organization. We also do um, other things outside of that. Yeah. Um, my spiritual father has got a school of prophet, uh, a prophetic school mm -hmm. 
Uh, we he mentors young prophets yeah. to make them understand the prophetic mm -hmm. and uh, young apostles and I also help out here and there you know helping to groom mm -hmm. what it is that I've learned yeah. to pour it also onto the you know to 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 other people oh that's uh, awesome and uh, you know what inspired you to become a mental health advocate and uh, what impact do you hope you know, to achieve in this uh, uh, field. The reason why I'm asking this, uh, mental health issues are just, you know, a topical issue these days. Yeah. Everyone is talking about mental health, mental health, mental health. And certain people don't know where to go when they are, you know, mentally affected, when they are depressed and everything. Yeah. Okay, so for mental health, it's something that's close to my heart because 2000 and end of 2020, I started struggling to breathe um, I, I would I'd find myself struggling to breathe. And during that time, I thought I probably had COVID, but it got worse and worse and worse until later on, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even walk. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was very sick, but I didn't know what was wrong. Mm. Then I went to the doctor. Uh, they tested me for COVID. I didn't have COVID. They tested me for oxygen. Mm -hmm. no, they tested my oxygen. It was good. Yeah. And then the doctor started talking to me, just having a conversation. And he says to me, um, are you okay? And I said, I'm sick. And he says, well, what's wrong? And I said, I don't know, but I'm just not okay. I'd lost a lot of weight. Um, I would find myself, you know, like, um, like, you know, hyperventilating yeah. and I, I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And he started talking to me and then he says to me, you have entered into clinical depression. And that's, I didn't know about depression and I'd heard people talking about it. Yes. And it was a battle because um, I was put on antidepressants. I remember it was Donex mm. that they put me on. And um, I went on antidepressants for about two weeks. But they used to make me feel so tired. I couldn't wake up. Uh, and they would, um, so I would be awake up until 12 midnight. Mm. I would just wake up and sit like a zombie. And... In the morning, I would feel so tired. Yeah. So it was like I didn't have a life. And they also started giving me a lot of suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. And like you just be sitting there and you just be thinking, you know, I just want to die. Die, let me die. Let me just die, you know. You, 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 and you don't know where these thoughts are coming from. Yeah, and, sure. and, and it was so hard. And sometimes, and I started getting scared to drive my car. Mm. Because whenever I would try to drive my car, I would hear a voice just saying, oh, get out of the road. Mm -hmm. So I stopped driving. Then after about six, after about two weeks, mm -hmm. I stopped myself from the the, the medication, and uh, oh, that's when my battle started. Mm. I was uh, I would wake up um, Ola. I wouldn't want to get out of bed. I would keep my windows closed. Mm -hmm. I would stay in the dark. I was so inconsistent. I could not keep up with appointments. Mm. I would tell people I would come. I wouldn't come. I was just tired. There was. I, I just felt like I didn't want to do anything mm. at all, mm. you know, and I would eat in bed, go back to bed, you know, so I would wake up, sleep, sleep, you know, and um, uh, I would distance myself from people mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I would struggle to hear my heart beating. I would be there and I would be trying to say, am I breathing? And I would be listening and mm -hmm. I couldn't. Sometimes I would feel like I've got something here choking me. Sometimes I would wake up, my gums would be sore. I would mm -hmm. sleep the whole night just grinding my right. teeth. Right. Sometimes I would find myself, you know, I'd be sitting and I'm busy just sucking my lip. It yes. was, it was, yes. it was, it was, it was the worst six months. I went through that Eish. for six months. And the worst thing about it was that I used to go and preach to people and mm. I'll tell them about the love of God yeah. and I'll tell them about Jesus. And by the time I go home, I get into my room, I lock myself mm. in. Mm. I don't want to see people. Yeah. And I f fought with suicide or thoughts. Those were the worst. Mm. Those, mm. those were the worst. Sometimes if I'm in a house, I would throw out knives by the window because I would be worried that if I go to sleep and what if that thought comes and then eggs, I give eggs, in to eggs, that, eggs, to eggs. that thought. So, Generally, I stopped driving for one year because Jeez. of depression. I yeah. stopped driving for one year. I didn't drive a car. That's tough. Yeah, because I remember one day I got into the car and I saw a truck coming mm -hmm. and something just said to me, 
go into that truck mm-hmm. and it took my mind and everything and the spirit and the power yeah. of God in me to say no you can't do that mm-hmm. and later on i i got to understand that um a lot of people they are going through this mm-hmm. but um people are ashamed to talk about yeah, it yeah very true and i i remember you know i was i'm a woman of god mm-hmm. i'm a prophetess and yeah. i've got people who look up to me and imagine telling people that i'm thinking about killing myself hey. yeah it's not it's not something really you know interesting to to it, hear it was hard <laughs> and also sometimes when people do that sometimes we judge mm-hmm. and we say akadi kutaura nevan why didn't this person share mm-hmm. i want to tell you the honest truth ola these thoughts when they come it takes the power of god it takes the grace of god mm-hmm. and it takes a very strong mind not to give in right people judge people and they say when you have been through that mm-hmm. where everything keeps telling you kill yourself mm-hmm. and and it's like it's a voice right and it's a quiet voice mm-hmm. it's not loud mm-hmm. it's a quiet voice okay. and people can't say it out loud you can't explain it when you are in depression you can't explain it i remember telling my mother i'm sick and she's like with what and i said i don't know but i'm just not okay mm-hmm. you can't explain it to people so this is why people don't talk about it yeah. this is why most um, especially i believe for men because when you start speaking about it i believe you are perceived maybe as mm-hmm. weak and men have got an ego because i've noticed it's happening a lot with the men yeah but i went through it and i survived by the grace of god mm. and you know help from the church i had people who were supporting me yeah. and i uh, would then introduce you to this is what brought me closer like you've been asking this is what actually really brought me close to my spiritual father because he became almost like um an accountability person mm-hmm. because he knew what i was going through and um you know sometimes he had to just make random calls mm-hmm. to check to say are you okay mm-hmm. you know because sometimes i'll just switch off my phone and i did not want to talk mm-hmm. to people and i i i i believe that is really what um made me mm-hmm. you know to 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 to, to to really seem as a father because yeah. imagine dealing with that for a whole year mm. you are dealing with yeah, depression and suicidal thoughts mm, yeah it's quite it's quite tough yeah. what i said story from uh, prophet um, primrose omega here on the ola 7 podcast show we talking about everything you know uh, surrounding here name everything that's you know nyanya uh, you go tira ne star also and uh, prophet is you know your expertise ranging from leadership development you know to diamond cutting and uh, and polishing mm-hmm. you know how do you stay up to the and skilled in such you know uh, diverse areas okay so 2000, 2017 i was chairperson for an organization called young miners foundation mm-hmm. it's quite an organization it's big organization right now um one of the founders he still there is doing uh, quite great work uh, mr pain mm-hmm. so they made me their board chairperson and uh, i wanted to understand more about mining because mm-hmm. of that i went into it i, I knew nothing yes, that was the yes. truth mm-hmm. so because of that i was forced to get into the industry i used to go kune makorokoza different mines watching what they were doing seeing what they were doing and um i remember we were pushing for for mmcz to s- change the SI policy on uh, semi precious stones mm-hmm. because during that time we realized that a lot of semi precious stones in Zimbabwe were being uh, sent out illegally so we were trying to you know to push them to say okay is there a way that you can make it easier for miners to bring semi precious mm-hmm. stones and you know they get them cut and polished and you know they sell it to you at yeah. a high value mm-hmm. uh so that if 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 they do that at least if they can get money yeah. they don't need to sell them you know to 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 to, to the foreigners mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. so because of that that's where the experience now started coming from because it was more about just understanding the mm-hmm. industry yeah. i was in and i remember during that time i was invited to speak a lot on on mining and yeah. sometimes they found it interesting that during that time the chairperson was a woman so you know you'd get invited so yes. i knew because i was a woman and i was uh, you know in mining i had to know what i was talking yes. about yes. so i just had to 
enter into mm. the field mm -hmm. practically to understand, to learn, so that when you stood in front of people who know <laughs> this business, you understand. Exactly. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Prophet, uh, what are your future aspirations, you know, both personally, uh, I mean, personal and uh, professional? Professionally. Uh, I think my future aspects with everything that has happened is just to push the work of God. Uh, personally, um, personally, uh, to just be me, continue being me, mm -hmm. and uh, not yet uh, on the market mm -hmm. <laughs> for that. Right. Yes, when it comes, it will come. <laughs> but I think right now my focus is mm -hmm. on pushing my ministry, mm -hmm. pushing the work of God, serving God, you know, bringing souls to Christ, basically. And um, what I want to do is I really want to work with the youth mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate their uniqueness and actualize their purpose, mm -hmm. help them find their calling, know who they are in God, who God has called them to be. I think basically this is where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And obviously preaching outside. I've, I've been to, I was in Gabon mm -hmm. soon after prison. It was quite interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I got out of prison a few days later. I was in Gabon and I remember telling them about my experience in prison. Yes. And I said, oh, yes, at the bottom of my CV, also Ed X. Convict. Convict. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, convict. Laugh. and they were laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, any advice, you know, to the young people in Zimbabwe who aspire to follow your footsteps? Look, um, one thing that I, 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 I can just say to people is um, you need to just find your purpose. You need to just know who you are because a life without purpose is, 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 is a life that is... It's a dead life. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, you need to find your purpose. That is, I think for me, that is the number one thing. You need to know why am I here? Why is, why, why, why am I me? If I am Tatenda, why is Tatenda here? Why did God bring Tatenda to be on earth? Mm -hmm. Why, you know, am I in this family? Why am I in this setup? Why? Yeah. You need to know those mm -hmm. things. And when you begin to ask those questions and you you find your purpose yes. in Christ. Mm -hmm. You will become fulfilled because I've understood that the one thing that gives fulfillment in life is to fulfill your purpose. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of young people are getting lost right now because they don't know their purpose and they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I believe that takes some time. Speak to God. Say, God, why was I created? Mm -hmm. Who am I? What have you called me to do? And I believe that is the most important thing, finding purpose. Very powerful. Thank you so much, uh, Prophet Prim Rose Miga. Uh, we have heard a lot of stories, and I think you cleared some of them. Uh, and some still not clear, like the bishop one. And uh, <laughs> it's clear. Am I, uh, it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> but see, it's okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching on the spot. I was talking to Prophet uh, Prim Rose Miga here on the spot. But what is our Siana Siana? Chinga chingo vanzo kwa muzi kama zuno tewe rabata maybe yao mwarugulu wa kukona ni nasa wasa chechi rukupi zuno kamira say maybe you can just give them the details kwa Okay, so our church is on Corner Fest and Nelson Mandela uh, Grace Faith Ministries we are on the third floor but you can follow me on my WhatsApp platforms mm -hmm. Prophetess Tino Primrose Miga on Facebook Yes mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much uh, for coming uh, Prophetess uh, Primrose Miga and also to our viewers, we really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at DJ All of Seven. Papa is a wanna show, so don't forget to to subscribe so that when we are next show, you'll be waiting. Thank you so much. Until next time, bye bye. Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and and your family buy groceries pay school fees renew your insurance pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone 
And you're guaranteed access to USD Cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. It's the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.